Welcome everybody, I'm Sarah Seidelman and this is the Hummingbird series while I introduce you to wonderful people who I think you should know. And Jennifer Johnson is a weight loss coach for moms who I just stumbled into one day on Instagram as one does. And I just loved her message because she's sort of here to like help women stop apologizing for who they are, lose weight and, you know, really begin to like seize their life and take and take back the reins and make it beautiful again. So welcome, Jennifer. I'm super glad you're here. Thank you. And I'm so glad I actually uh, was refer referred to you. I, I'm a big page a day person. Like I'm a, that's what I, my morning routine is like seven page a day books. And so one of my clients said, Hey, have you seen this? You love elephants. Cause one of the things I do with my clients is I actually give them a little crystal elephant um, with the concept of like when, you know, you probably know this when mother elephants are giving birth, the whole herd goes around them, they kind of protect them. And so I'm like, that's, that's the mentality that I go in with my, my mom strong method. And she's like, this has an elephant on it. And it's a page a day, you need to read this. And I flipped it. And I was like, she's from Minnesota. I'm from Minnesota. I feel like we're soul sisters. I need to reach out to her. And so I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Didn't realize that for, maybe I forgot that intense elephant connection. That's so cool. Know, yeah. yeah. Elephants are amazing. Yes. Agreed. So yeah, how did you get into coaching? I mean, most people don't just like, don't wake up and be born and go, I'm going to be a life coach. Like what happened to you that you ended up here? Yeah. Yeah. We'll do like long story, semi short. We'll go with that. Yeah. Um, so I, my, my real, like, you know, I hate the term like health journey, but we'll go with that. My, my health journey um, started really about six years ago when I was, my son was turning two and I heard myself saying, um, you know, when I lose the baby weight and I knew that was, can I swear on this? Is that okay? Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. I was like, I knew that was like total bullshit. Like it was, he was turning two. It wasn't baby weight at that point. And so for me, I wanted to do it differently. I tried Weight Watchers. I tried intermittent fasting. I tried keto. I tried all kind of the fad things and nothing was really working. And so for me, I, I started to break the rules and started to be like, okay, what really feels good to me? And why does that feel good? Why do I think I can't eat carbs? Can I eat carbs and still lose weight? And so I kind of broke the rules. And in that year long period, I lost 60 pounds and I've kept it off since then. And I started doing, I actually started my, uh, my coaching through Beachbody. And then when that kind of flipped where it was becoming more like product sales or growing your, like your base of people, I found through that experience that I loved coaching. And so I was like, well, okay, they won't, you can't get paid for coaching when you're in a network marketing company. I'm like, so I'm just going to like not be a Beachbody coach anymore. And like, open my own business. And so I started, so I left Beachbody and I started my own coaching business, Craft Your Life Coaching with the focus on moms, on moms that have, you know, school-aged children all the way up through. I work with a mom right now who is 55, who's empty nester and is just like, okay, now it's my time for me. But those who have that mom experience. Yeah. Um, and so I do nutrition coaching. I do, but it's really like, I told you before the call, it's, it's like the Trojan horse, right? Where everyone says, you know, not everyone, but a lot of people say they want to lose weight. That's the thing they're focusing on. I just need to lose weight. And it's like, oh, the life stuff that's like not allowing you to lose weight from, especially being a mom. And so I work on, I say, I'm going to help you lose weight, but then I get you behind the door and I'm like, all right, let's break it down. Like, let's make your whole life great. And, and I'll also help you lose weight as well. But like, it's not all about the weight loss. Let's like break the rules, make your own and really make like the operating manual for yourself is what my experience is. So yeah, long, long story short. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. And I think it's like the doorway, you know, I, I, I can think of, well, there was another program that I was part of. Of course I did. I mean, in my eating history, I remember Weight Watchers. I mean, there's some, all those things that you just mentioned. Um, and there's a company now that's got a, another thing going on anyway. And you know, everything's a doorway and I think yep. food and eating can be a doorway to like lots of deep things. So, yeah. so another thing you mentioned, I think on your website or maybe it was on Instagram, you said something to the effect of how discipline is really a form of self-care. And I love that because I think um, myself, a lot of my clients, you know, sort of relate to this rebel type of person who's like, I don't, you know, I break the rules. I don't do this. You know, I don't do these things. And discipline can be kind of a four letter word to us. Like, oh, don't talk to me about discipline. Like, that's just not <laughs> my deal. Um, but I have found, and it sounds like you have too, that there is discipline that is kind of an act of self, like a, I think of it as like a radical act of self-love towards ourselves. Yes. Um, talk to me about like, yeah, 
what's your experience with discipline? How do you work with your clients with that? Um, yeah. 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 I think when people think discipline, same thing as, you know, weight loss, or you say habits or routines, um, we automatically think we have a paradigm around that, whether it's, you know, when people, when I tell people that you can lose weight, and it can still not, it doesn't have to suck. Like you can actually, it can be fun and easy. Their minds are like, no, <laughs> like I have to give up carbs and eat kale and air. Or if I'm disciplined, I have to be up at five in the morning and I have to drink all my water and I have to eat a lot of protein and I have to, and it's like, you have a paradigm that you bring with you a baggage around certain terms, certain experiences, whatever that is. And where I challenge people is, first of all, realize what paradigm you're bringing. When I say, well, okay, we're going to need to practice consistency or discipline. Like, what does that mean to you? And a lot of my, exactly, a lot of my clients are like, well, that means that every single day I have to work out and every single day I have to eat kale and every single, and I'm like, well, no, like what Air. feels good <laughs> to you, right? Like, don't start, don't bring in your old baggage. Like, where are you at right now? Are you working out at all? Are you eating any veggies? Are you going to bed at a decent time? Are you drinking any water? Where are you at right now? And then where can you add in some consistency to that next baby step? So say I have, I have clients that struggle for me. I'm like a water hog. Like I love water, but like some people really struggle with drinking water. And I'm like, I'm not going to take you from drinking 20 ounces of water, maybe, or like 20 ounces of diet Coke a day to now you need to drink a gallon of water. It's like, you need to have that discipline like, and that's where people go, right? They go from zero to a hundred when they think I need to be disciplined. I need motivation. And then they can maybe hold on to a hundred, wherever their hundred is for like seven five days, minutes. <laughs> eight, right? Five minutes. And then just the thought of that, of doing that for every single day is exhausting. So they quit and they say, well, I'm not disciplined. Well, I don't need habits. I don't need routines where my challenge to kind of break your brain a little bit is to go from where, just figure out where you're at right now, right? Where are you at right now? What do your routines look like? Do you want to read more? Do you want to move more? Do you want to eat better? Whatever that is, do you really want that and why? Because sometimes people are like, I should read more. And I'm like, why? I... Like, well, what do you mean why? And I'm like, well, why, why should you read more? Well, I mean, I just should. And I'm like, do you like reading? Like, no, not really. I don't really like, I'm like, then don't read. Like <laughs> you got to break your brain a little bit and go, why do I want discipline? What do I want discipline around? And do I actually want that? And it's like, no, actually I do want to read. I do see benefits in that. I like to learn more. I like to that quiet time. Okay, great. Where are you at right now? Well, I have 17 books on my bedside stand with three chapters in, in each of them. And I haven't finished a book in seven years. And I'm like, okay, that's where we're at now. We're not going to take you from there to now reading a page, you know, every single day of like for the next year. Like we're going to take your you're gonna, little baby steps to get you to that discipline. Because if you go from zero to a hundred, you're going to keep shaming yourself over and over and over. And, and especially yeah. because you work with the rebels and probably high achievers and probably like badass people, they know they can go to a hundred. And the hardest part is starting at zero and going to one and two. Yeah, because we want to be perfect right out of the gate. It's so not rewarding, right? It's just we like want the A, yes. right? Yes, yes, it's so boring. But that's I, how you can discipline in a way that feels good. Yes, totally agree. And I am not a water hog, so I my plan for feel good water is I put a lot of really fun stickers on my water bottle, and I find yes. that is gently helping me to drink more water and less. Um, decaf coffee is like my yeah. habit. I'm trying to gently shift. Yeah. So I love this. So, so when you're talking about habits, like starting them is like, or getting better habits that you really want to is like starting so small, check yeah. in, see where you're at. So if you're 20 cans of diet Coke a day, don't go to zero yeah. Shoot for nine this, you know, today instead of 20 or yes. whatever. Yeah. Step it down gently, and, gently. And like, listen to your asshole brain. When you say, you know, it's like 20, you're saying you're drinking 20 cans of Mountain Dew, right? And your asshole brain is telling you, you need to go to zero. You really shouldn't drink soda. So yeah. you pour it all on the sink and you get it all out and then you laugh and you're miserable because you have a caffeine headache and you're craving the sweetness and you just like yanked the rug out from underneath you and your asshole brain's going to go, okay, if I'm at 20, well, 15, I mean, only 15, like that's not enough. I need to go zero. And it's like, no, like don't listen to your brain. Your brain is trying to keep you safe. And so like 20 to 15, and then set a goal for that. That's the discipline, right? Set a goal for seven days. You're going to go to 15, try that out for seven days. At the end of seven days, how does that feel? Was it really crappy? We'll go to 18 maybe. 
was it actually okay? Well, then go to 12. And like just that reassessment, like where are you at right now? How do you feel right now? And how can you go from zero to the, again, it's so not sexy. Like if I really sold like what I actually do, I'd be like, I make you do the boring things in a very little way consistently. Like it's not sexy stuff, but that's yeah. the secret to anyone that you've seen that has success in any area of their life. It's most likely going from zero, flubbing it up back to zero to one, then staying at one for a little bit. Yay. And then like one to maybe three and then like back to two. And like, that's, it's just the unsexy story of success, I think. It is. And like, I have a lot of clients who are creative. So they're wanting to like write a novel or create a body of work. And it's like, they look at, and I've done this too, like look at authors we admire. Oh my God, Liz Gilbert, she's got 20 books or, you know, how did they do this? But really writing a book starts with a 50, you know, sitting at your desk for 10 minutes, you know, just to start, just to begin. And yeah, yes. I totally agree. It's this yeah. taking millions of tiny steps towards ourselves. Yeah. Um, what, yeah, like, how do you help moms who are like, um, I can, like, I'm still, I'm not in the mom fray with the young kids anymore, but I was, how do you help a mom who's like, I don't have any time for myself because, you know, I've got to do this and this and this, and maybe I'm, maybe I'm working too. And I've got kids at home, but I want to have a life, but I've got this job and I, you know, where do you start with somebody who's just feeling overwhelmed? Their schedule is packed. It feels like there's not five minutes and they've just hired you. And they're like, well, where do we start? Like I am lost at sea here and there's no time for me, you know? Yeah. That is literally how almost every single one of my clients comes to me with. They know they want to make a change. They know that they're not happy with their body or with their app right now but they just don't know how to do it. And it feels so like impossible when you're in it. Right. And I think you've know, talked a little bit about the mommy martyr culture. I don't think that like, I don't think it's unrealistic. Obviously there are studies and books on the, you know, the third shift of like the, the amount of women that work, you know, work, not only work jobs, but also work the third shift, which is not only your family, but like all the little things that you're doing, all the mental labor, all the, literally it's like having 15 tabs open in your brain all the time thinking about all oh, that permission slip. I got to wash the blue shirt for camp tomorrow. We have to, it's crazy sock day on Thursday. Sunscreen. We just carry this emotional load, right? So it's very real. And when I work with clients initially, again, they come in with this paradigm. I'm going to work with Jen. She's going to kick my butt. I'm going to start eating the kale and getting up at 5 a.m. And, da, da, da. and I'm more like, okay, wh hey, where are we at right now? And if you are going to bed at 11, can we do like 1030, 1045? If you uh, want to eat better, but you're just eating takeout all the time, can we do one less takeout meal, not no takeout meals? Can we do a planned snack instead of like a meal prep Sunday slaving over your stove, right? So it's, it's taking them and reminding them that I think there's a lot of shame around that too, that like they might have the time they might have actual physical time where like maybe the kids go to bed and they have two hours before their bedtime and they just zone out in front of Netflix and they feel so guilty they're not working out or they're not. And it's, it's not, it's this concept of time versus energy. Mm. So you have a constant energy leak as a mom where you are, again, all the, all the things I listed, right? The permission slips, the soap thing, you walk by a bathroom, oh, soap needs to be filled, you need to grab two rolls of toilet paper to fill that up. All these things that we see as moms Okay. And it feels like no one else sees it. I don't think the people we live with are jerks. I don't think they're like, oh, she'll get it. I think they just see things differently. And so you have all this energy leaking and no wonder you're exhausted and just want to numb out. And for a lot of women, that's alcohol, that's yeah. food, that's social media, that's amazon.com. I mean, it all manifests in certain numbing ways, right? And so yeah. when women come in, I'm like, okay, how are we currently numbing ourselves? Is it food? Is it wine? Is it shopping? Is it, what does that look like? And then where can we start with some of these smaller things? How can you communicate better to your kids and say, hey, honey, will you refill the soap dispenser? Hey, and I, I always hear the thing of like, I shouldn't have to ask. Like, well, you cannot and be resentful that's cool. You choose that, right? Or you can ask and actually and give them instructions like, help me clean up. Well, for them, that might be, let's go on the garage and organize my tool shed. You know, it's like, no, help me clean up. I mean, put your socks here, refill the soap dispenser, stock the toilet paper, right? Yeah. So asking for what you need, setting those boundaries, but also giving yourself some slack that like time 
and energy are two very different things. So you may not have, you may have the time, but maybe not the energy. Start looking at those energy leaks, patching those so that when you have the time, you actually have the energy to do the things you want to do. Long story short. So <laughs> yes, love it, love it. Okay, when you talked about the numbing, because I think this is another thing like we do also to avoid. No, most of my clients are not, don't have young kids. Like I, but some do. But as we, it's like that numbing too sometimes is just, we're, we feel that horrible guilt because we know there's, we're out of integrity with ourselves. Yeah. There's something we want to do, whether it's writing the book or, you know, some kind of thing that we're longing to do or working out, getting yeah. better at yoga, finally taking our life coaching certification exam so we can be licensed to go out and do our work in the state of Wyoming, whatever it is. Um, I find that like connecting, like spirituality is also another component or like for my clients where that does a lot of really good, especially time spent in the morning, like you were describing, sitting with some inspiring literature, you know, meditating, praying, whatever it is. Do you, yeah. Do you have wisdom for people that way? Is there a spiritual component to the work you do? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm a big woo and I was a closeted woo for a while. And then I think probably about two years ago, I started like leaking it on Instagram. Like I'd like show my Oracle cards or I'd like talk about the new moon and cancer coming up. And I was always like, I mean, I grew up Catholic, right? So like, I was like terrified that like someone would come and burn me at the stake. And like all my friends would be like, oh my God, she's totally not credible because she's so woo. But I think that the more that I embraced it, the more I had clients coming to me with, and, and I embraced my own, stayed in my own lane. And if someone came to me and they were Mormon or they were Catholic or they were whatever, I was able to help them through that because the thread is all the same, right? It's all about, I mean, I, I just started reading um, the Martha Beck book, the integrity one, uh, pretty yes. based on like your recommendation. Yes. And I love what she's talking about, integrity meaning intact. And so I visualize it as like, we give so much to other people, to the world, to our work, to our partners, to everything, right? And it's kind of bringing that back intact with yourself. And mm -hmm. I literally visualize that like what, whatever your quiet time is, whether it's a long walk or it's putting your feet in the grass or it's um, doing a meditation or it's reading a page a day or any of that stuff just kind of brings back more of your pieces so that you can feel like you're coming from a really whole intact place. And when I talk to busy people, to people who are busy, literally busy, I and mean, not, they're not like BSing, they are busy. And I tell them to slow down and take 10 breaths during the day. Pretend you're breathing from your heart and breathe in and out 10 times, right? Or meditate for five minutes, just set a timer, sit on your office, turn on the, you know, turn on the fan, or just wash the fan for five minutes in silence. Like any of these things, they look at me like I'm crazy. They're like, I don't have time for this. And I'm like, you don't have time not to. Because when you ignore those things, and they're not like, you don't need to go to a Buddhist retreat and sit for 15 hours. Five. You don't need to go to India either, which I also did that. But yes. Yeah. I mean, if you can do it, that would be amazing, right? But I think we often like, we, we play this thing that's like spirituality or mindfulness as it has to be, A, it has to have rules. And so we can't play by the rules. My brain's too active. I never can be quiet in my head. I can't meditate. And it's like, that's not the point. The point is just slowing down for a second and becoming more intact. Mm -hmm. And so with my women, I do journaling practices. I do a, a morning visualization where I'm like, if today went the best possible, what would that look like? Just run through your day, everything going really, really well, five minutes, right? And they struggle with that because they're like, I don't have time, I gotta get up. And I'm like, you, you don't have time not to. And the women that I can convince to do it for long enough, they're like, I don't know what I would do without my 20 minutes in the morning. Like I'm a better mom. They start seeing the benefit, but that's where that little bit of that grit and discipline comes in, right? In the beginning, like making yourself do it. And then you see some of the payoffs and then you're like, oh, that's what she was talking about. And then they're more likely to keep doing it. But initially it's a little bit of me being like, do the thing, go sit in silence, like go for a walk, you know? And then once they see the benefits of it long enough, then they're actually like more willing to continue doing it. So, yeah. Yeah. Amen. Like the morning practice is like so critical. And I was just talking to somebody and I'm sure you go through this with your clients, but like, you know, it has to start the night before. And there was this period in my life where I was like, my morning is so important. And I know it is, and I've got to get myself to bed earlier. And I, my goal was I wanted to get up at five every day, which most people that's kind of absurd, but that was my thing or four 45 even, <laughs> but I was like having trouble getting myself to bed. So I set the Alexa every night at like eight 30 would be like, Sarah, all over the house. <laughs> There, it's time to get ready to go to bed. And the kids are like, oh my God, mom, I can see yes. minutes later, because I knew myself, I knew I would start messing around and like avoiding it again. Yes. 
Sarah, this is your last warning. <laughs> I was able to stop that because it just took me that long to habituate myself to putting myself to bed a little earlier. Yes. So no, you're so so right. That's, that's the missing piece. Again, I think a lot of people say, okay, well, I'm going to get up. I got to get up at five or I got to get up earlier. And then they don't give themselves more rest or recovery on the, the time before. And honestly, even it's not even, I mean, going to bed earlier is obviously better, right? Like getting more restorative sleep. But even if you just switch out what you're doing for that like 90 minutes before bed, right? Don't even like say I'm gonna go to bed earlier. Just start like turning off the screen. Start putting on, putting, if you're not gonna turn off the screen, put, at least put on your blue lockers, right? Wear those for 90 minutes. Even if you're gonna be in your screen, great. If you don't wanna give that up, no big deal. But just like shield yourself from some of that blue light, right? Start a diffuse, like diffuse some essential oil that like reminds you of its bedtime. Like a serenity from doTERRA is one of my favorites. So diffuse that at night. Just like look at that 90 minutes before whenever you're bed, don't even try to touch bedtime yet. Just look at the 90 minutes before and what can you do to start to ramp down? Stop watching the murder mysteries. Stop like racing around the house like a crazy person. Like side like, special, yeah. Right, exactly. Like give your brain some time. Put on your blue blockers. Maybe get a book, get your journal out and just do, just switch that out. And then you'll see your brain go, oh, okay. And then you can maybe say, okay, 30 minutes earlier to bed. Okay, give that a shot. Cause you, you right, you gotta give yourself a fighting chance. You're not gonna have a morning routine unless you start working on your evening and getting yourself more restorative sleep. I'm a huge sleep, like sleep is my thing. Sleep queen, yeah. Sleep is huge guys. If that's all you ever did, it would change your life. <laughs> I am not even, literally there's like women that I worked for the first three months. I'm like, go to bed. They're like, what about my nutrition? What about my workouts? I'm like, go to bed. Bed. Like that's literally all I do for like three months with them. And then they figure that out. And I'm like, see, everything else is easier when you're well rested. You're a kinder human. You can work out harder. You actually want to eat better. Like it's all related to sleep. <laughs> Just go to bed. <laughs> Amen. So good to talk with you, Jennifer. And tell us like where, yeah, where can people find you? Like what resources do you have to offer to people who are listening to this going, I need this program. <laughs> Yeah, I would say head over to Instagram. I'm at coachjennifer.t.johnson on Instagram. Um, Yeah, cool. Um, You can link, you can go there. I'm on my stories pretty much every day on my stories. I'm sharing some tidbit. Uh, And then I have two formal programs right now. One is the mom strong method, which is my higher level one on one coaching for working moms. And that's a nine month contract. And it's really, um, it's, it's the, the precipitous for most women joining is more like my life is out of control and I need to lose weight. And so we focus on kind of the, the physical health stuff first, but we untangle the life stuff as well. And, that, and that's the reason why it's nine months, right? These like 10 day, you know, 21 day programs, eh, it's, you're just not going to have the sticking power that going through life with a life coach would help you with that for that nine months. Um, and then if someone's wanting just nutrition, I have a new program called the nutrition made easy. Uh, and it's working on it's we, the basis is macronutrients, which to some people already brings up like red flags. I promise you, I make it easy where it's like efficiently getting you into a weight loss deficit or a calorie deficit. If that's where you want to go, but it's a self-guided module program. You also get custom macros for me, from me, email access and all that too. So all of those are in the links in my bio at Instagram, um, on Facebook, a little bit more personal stuff, Jennifer Tickets Johnson. You can find me there too. So just come say hi. I'd love to say hi. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Any last, any last shot in the arm or parting shot for people as we, as we say goodbye. Oh, just do it small I know, and, and acknowledge the brain. I know it sucks. It's the worst to go slow. We want to go faster. We can go faster. Just start small. What have you been putting off? What have you been no assing that you can half ass today? That's my like new thing is like, love it. Zero ass days are half ass, just half ass it. Half ass your way to success. That's the goal. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you. Okay. Thanks everybody.